You famously predicted the financial crisis in your 2007 bestseller, The Black Swan. Uh, perhaps overlooked in that book was another prediction, and I'm going to quote directly from The Black Swan. As we travel more on this planet, epidemics will be more acute. We will have a germ population dominated by a few numbers, and the successful killer will spread vastly more effectively. I see the risks of a very strange, acute virus spreading throughout the planet. That was you, Nassim Taleb, writing in 2007. If an epidemic was predictable, Nassim, was yes. a pandemic preventable? No, well, that, that's the whole point. Of course it was uh, preventable. And we've known from, uh, you know, uh, Jan 26, when we issued our warning, that, uh, that effectively uh, you should kill it in the egg if you can and, and act very quickly. And of course, people ignored it, except perhaps just a tiny bit the Trump administration by closing uh, travel uh, from China or restricting it in some ways. So it was not a black swan. It was a white swan. And I'm so irritated that people who say it's a black swan. We have had black swans. September 11 was definitely a black swan. This was the, the white swan. And it's no excuse for companies, corporations, not to be prepared for that. And definitely no excuse for governments to not be prepared for something like this. Nassim, there is a struggle playing out right now in American society, a struggle between the common good on the one hand and individual liberty on the other hand. Another manifestation yes. is this debate over what we should prioritize. Should we prioritize public health or should we prioritize the economy? And my question to you is this. Who should people be listening to, Nassim? The coronavirus okay. maximalists, like Andrew Cuomo, or the coronavirus minimalists, a camp that occasionally includes the president, Donald Trump? I don't understand this false economy. Uh, separating the economy from the virus is extremely foolish because it's not like you have uh, two different parallel universes. They, 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 having something spread like this is uh, very damaging to the economy. Uh, and to give you a simple thing, had we spent the money or, or probably taken a hit uh, or given, you know, transferred the risk to the airlines who would have taken a hit in January, we wouldn't be here today. The problem we have today is too much connectivity. They did not want to spend pennies in January. Now they're going to spend trillions. So, and, and if you delay more, you're going to spend even more. We don't know much about this disease. This is not a regular, uh, uh, it's not the flu. Okay, it's much more uh, uh, untractable. We, we, we don't know enough about it. That, that therefore, it should be extra cautious. So on so the one hand... The trade-off trade is a fake trade-off. It's a fake trade-off. So yes. delaying is something that was done, and in many cases is no longer being done. In this state, for example, New York State, there's no delay. There's a lot of social distancing being enforced, and obviously much of the economy is shut down here. In a, across the country the, what about sending people back to work as fast as possible I, I don't think I don't think uh, it makes sense to send people back to work uh, I think even if the president can say whatever they want uh, it'd be irresponsible on the part of employers to have people uh, in the office in the elevators uh, the World Health Organization has been way behind uh, way behind they didn't realize that face masks uh, would be uh, a good idea until recently after, uh, you know, two and a half months of wasting time telling people not to wear masks. So I don't think, I don't think the government, the, the central government has much to say here except perhaps for their employees. Nassim, you were highly critical of yes. the bank bailouts of 2008 yes. and 2009. Now, of course, the government is spending $2 trillion to try and rescue the economy before it collapses. Once again, will these bailouts work any better than the last bailouts? Okay, so bailouts, by definition, okay, uh, have a problem. So, and the first one, I'm going to say bluntly here, they're not bailing you out, uh, Eric Schaffer. They're not bailing out the listeners here. They're bailing out investors and corporations. And who are they bailing out? Those who did not have a buffer. Okay, not having a buffer is irresponsible, whether you're a corporation or an investor. Now, you've got to realize 
that nature, Mother Nature, or God, however, whatever his theology, made us with two kidneys. And, and, and this applies, I guess, even to uh, Bloomberg employees, no? that they have two kidneys. Why two kidneys? You have huge extra capacity because you may need it one day. Because if you don't have extra protection, you will, uh, you may face difficulties, you may face something, you don't have to predict the environment. So it's the equivalent of having cash on hand rather than debt. So we favor the companies the system favor the companies that, that, that spend their cash instead of, you know, keeping it in reserve, spend their cash to buy their stock and, and furthermore borrow over those who had a cautious attitude. And now we're bailing out those who made that mistake. Nassim, we should bail out, we should bail out employees. We should bail out citizens, not corporations who made these mistakes. That's at the level of corporation. Now, at the level of portfolios, Okay, well, we're here, also here, yes. Could I ask you a question on that subject? Because you've rem yes. been reminding us since the financial crisis, and if anyone was listening actually before the financial crisis, of the need to have catastrophe insurance. Um, exactly. Tail risk, that's, that's tail risk protection yeah, exactly. is, is, is another you know, term of art for it in the financial markets. Here we are down some 24% from the highs in the U.S. stock market. The question investors are asking themselves, Nassim, is... Is it too late or should we be buying insurance now against the okay. potential for okay. yet more market declines? Okay. The worst thing you can do with insurance is try to time it. Okay. You have to have your insurance at all times. And, and the way uh, we, we, I mean, Universal, we, 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 we explain it to people. We tell them, listen, I, I don't time my car insurance. I don't time my house insurance. And I so, wouldn't buy a house if I can't insure it. So same thing. If you don't have a tail insurance, you don't have a portfolio. Your portfolio is actually going to blow up.